Hey, what's poppin' people? Namaste, willkommen, bienvenue, welcome to Football Therapy. How you all doing? I hope you're doing well. And welcome to today's Chelsea news video where I'm going to be talking about three subjects as per the norm on this channel. First off, Chelsea could be playing out the remainder of the 2019-20 campaign without their only world-class player in the shape of N'Golo Kante. The player doesn't necessarily feel comfortable with the resumption of football, and to be honest, that's fair enough. I, like many people, respect that, so Chelsea could allow him to not play, essentially. And where would that leave Chelsea for the remainder of the season? A few words on that. Kepa out? Surely not, but maybe. Chelsea have just re-signed up Willy Caballero, and the reports regarding Kepa Rita Balaga aren't, yes, Frank Lampard trusts him, it's gonna be him, everything's going to be okay. No, apparently Valencia won him. So we'll talk about the Valencia story too. And finally, a little bit on the hot yet nauseating topic of Jadon Sancho. Apparently, Dortmund are willing to keep him to ensure they sell him for his optimum value, as well as most likely target destination Manchester United have made substantial financial, oh my god that rhymes, losses. So a lot to crack into in today's video and if you like daily updates on the football news regarding Chelsea Football Club, you know what you guys should do. Oh yes, oh yes, subscribe to Football Therapy. Thank you very much. Hit the bell, like the video, help me out. All right, let's get into it. Right, before we get into the uh, Kepa to Valencia story, which is pretty big. I mean, it's just a story at the moment, so in theory, it could be pretty big. Let's talk about N'Golo Kante. If you watch my previous news videos, you will know that N'Golo Kante has been granted compassionate leave to not train at the moment with the Chelsea team. Now they've come back to prepare for the resumption of the Premier League, the return of football. Kante has endured like emotional losses in his life. He himself had a bit of a health scare a couple of years ago. So it's completely understandable when the player does not feel comfortable returning to training, returning to football. Frank Lampard, as a compassionate individual, has basically granted him compassionate leave, saying nope, no one should be forced to play the game, and rightly so, but Chelsea are facing the possibility of concluding the campaign, completing the campaign, without their world-class midfield destroyer. So, what does that mean, finishing the season without Kante? Well, to be honest, he's really only played 50% of the games anyway, leading up to this situation, the pandemic, the pause. But it would have been nice having Kante back, a fully fit Kante, to hopefully really impose himself on the remaining fixtures and see Chelsea over the line. But it doesn't matter. Like I said, there are more serious things in life than football. So I get it. So what does it mean for Chelsea moving forward? Well, fortunately, Chelsea have options. Players like Ruben Loftus-Cheek are returning, and granted he's a different kind of player than N'Golo Kante, but there are options in the midfield. And, you know, you can play Kovacic on the right, you can play Mason Mount on the left, you can play Ruben Loftus-Cheek on the left, and at the base of the midfield, you can play Kovacic, Billy Gilmore, Jorginho, etc. There are plenty of options. Oh yeah, Ross Barkley as well. He probably will be selected, remember, because Frank Lampard loves him. So, we'll see what happens. Hopefully, N'Golo Kante feels a little bit more reassured, and I'll basically keep you guys updated on any developments regarding this story. Make sure you swing by football therapy on the regs. Right, before we talk about Jadon Sancho and Manchester United, let's talk about Kepa Aretha Balaga. Now, it wasn't so long ago the Spanish goalkeeper was coming out and talking about how he feels he's got the support and the backing of Chelsea coach Frank Lampard. Fair enough, he might do, and if you've watched this channel, you'll know my opinion on Kepa, which is pretty much that I think he's a very talented uh, young goalkeeper that has worrying, you know, peaks and troughs of form, that that trait in itself might make him not good enough for Chelsea. I'm not so sure yet. One thing is for sure, if Chelsea sell him this summer, they will make a gargantuan loss. Not because they will make a gargantuan loss anyway, not just because of that rather, but because of the pandemic transfer market. It doesn't make a very nice marriage. Anyway, apparently Citizen could be leaving Valencia in net and they could be interested in Kepa Arita Balaga. Now, let's think about this. Valencia are a big Spanish club. You know, they are. They're probably like, what, the fourth biggest club in Spain? I mean, like, Sevilla, 
a couple more. Basically, they're up there. Probably, probably a step up from Athletic Bill Bauer, where he came from. So there's that. Obviously, you know, no disrespect, it is a step down from Chelsea, certainly at the moment, but it's going back to the motherland in Spain and playing for a big club. Now, 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 is this realistic? Oh, I don't think so. Perhaps Frank Lampard is really keen on getting another goalkeeper. Still, we know Andre Onana is kind of desperate to get out of Ajax and as things stand, there's an agreement between the club and Andre Onana that he will go in the summer if the price is met. I think about 30 million quid or something, less than half of what Kepa cost Chelsea. Maybe Frank Lampard, who's spoken so much, so much to Hakim Ziyech over the last few months, he's been talking to him about under a nana. Maybe he tries to bring him in as well, and he says to the club, "Look, guys, this is my Chelsea, Frank Lampard's Chelsea. I had a crack with Kepa. He wasn't my signing. I, you know, I know a lot about good goalkeepers in my time playing football. I just don't fancy Kepa." Maybe. So maybe Chelsea look to just offload him, make a loss, who knows, loan him to something like Valencia. Try and sell him eventually, I'm not so sure. It will be really interesting to see the developments because this is one of those stories where people could speculate. People are like, yeah, he's just done. Frank Lampard doesn't want Kepa. And there's some people that are saying, yeah, he, you know, Frank Lampard knows he's a good, good goalkeeper. And let's not forget the last two games that Kepa played for Chelsea in that, he played really, really well. Recency bias, maybe his form had turned around. Anyway, there's a bunch of stories about Valencia and Kepa, and apparently like it's like a transfer saga that relates him to Neto of Barcelona as well. I'm gonna read a little bit more before I start presenting this kind of story to you guys, but still, I wanna just give you the headlines and let you know <laughs> Valencia could be interested in Kepa Aretha Balaga. Right then, let's talk about Jaden Sancho. First up, his most likely destination and heavy favourites to sign the young English winger was of course Manchester United. They need a right winger, they need a talisman to build the team around. It kind of made sense in many ways. Manchester United recently um, showed reports of financial losses, lots of money. Basically, it just shows that even they aren't immune to big financial issues in what is a global pandemic. So they, like other clubs, might not be able to make a hundred million pound transfer on one player when really they need to distribute money on wages. I think they've got a very high wage bill still. Uh, you know, if they don't make the Champions League, that'll be really, really bad. And they really are, like many other clubs, in a precarious situation. So can they be going around spending superstar money? I don't know, probably not. We know Chelsea, are equally in a vulnerable situation, but Chelsea have stacked loads of player sales money in the shape of Morata, Hazard, you know, if they sell back Yoko. There's more, you know, so there's money for Chelsea. Whether they're still capable of making a big transfer like Sancho, I'm not so sure, but Man United are indeed vulnerable. So in terms of a top four direct rival, Manchester United are similar to Chelsea in many ways at the moment in a sort of new project, granted not as new as Chelsea, so them getting or not getting Jadon Sancho would probably affect Chelsea in a massive way. But also, Chelsea do have an interest in the player themselves, even if they can't purchase him now. And maybe Jadon Sancho remains at Dortmund for another season, which some reports are suggesting. Dortmund know what they have on their hands, one of the hottest properties in European and indeed world football. Do they want to flog him this summer to make a massive loss? Well, not a loss, they'll make a massive profit. Uh, not make the optimum value. That's the story. If they wait another summer, they can maybe sell him for an extra 30, 40 million, whatever, as well as keeping the player for another hopefully successful campaign in the Bundesliga next season. It could just make oh so much more sense for Dortmund to keep the player for another year. And to be honest, that might be exactly what ends up happening. And if that does happen, who knows, maybe Chelsea have another successful campaign a better one than Manchester United, maybe they decide to go in for the player next window. Who knows, to be honest, I still kind of maintain Chelsea don't really need him positionally, so we'll see what happens. Anyway, what do you guys think about the new stories I've spoken about in today's video? Let me know your thoughts on playing the rest of the campaign without N'Golo 
Kante, how do you feel about that? What's your take, what's your stance on Kepa Ruta Balaga? How do you feel about him going? Do you think he could ever go to Valencia? How much of a loss would Chelsea have to make if they did sell him? Let me know your thoughts on that. And of course, express your feelings on Jaden Sancho and the whole saga down in the comments section below. If you've enjoyed the content I've provided for you guys today, I'd appreciate you liking the video, subscribing to Football Therapy. If you are new to the channel, man, you're also all welcome to follow me on social media at Football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter. That's it from me, you lot. Enjoy the football that will be happening soon, hopefully, and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me baby